<laughs> I'm not going to go back funny. Haha. I'm not going to go back and re-say everything that I just said because that would be kind of silly and crazy. So, But when we're talking about probability, we're normally going to see something that looks like this. And it's kind of our mathematical shortcut way of saying, hey, the probability of whatever's in the parentheses occurring is, and then we have the value afterwards. So when we do generic or what we call simple probability, there's two types that we get into. Experimental and theoretical. Experimental, which you look at the word that's at the beginning there, experiment, means we actually do something. So if I say, if you flip a coin 50 times, how many times do you get heads? It's because I literally flipped a coin 50 times. I did the experiment. Theoretical means, how many times should I get heads if I flip a coin 50 times? Well, I should get it 25 because it's 50-50 every time I flip. So that can change up what our, what our probability looks like a little bit, depending on what we do it. But no matter which, this is our little mini formula for probability. What we're interested in, what I like to call the number of successes. I get what I want, whether it's a number on a die or flipping a coin or a spinner, whatever it happens to be, over the total number of possibilities, okay, or the total number of times I do it. So if I'm going to be calculating probability experimentally, I'm actually going to do a physical activity to get some values. So the number of times I get what I want, I spun a six, I rolled a three, whatever it is, goes on top. Again, my successes. And then the number of times I did the experiment goes in the bottom. Same formula, just stated a little bit differently. So the example we see for that's down here on the bottom. Researchers find this experimental drug improved the condition of 340 out of 400 patients who were treated. What's the probability it will help other patients? Okay, so they actually did an experiment. 340 times they had a success. They got what they wanted. That goes on top of the fraction. How many times did they try it? They tried it 400 times. That goes on the bottom. So depending on how you want to write your answer... I could do 340 divided by 400 and do math enter enter. And that is way too bright. That's better. I get 17 out of 20, which I see here. Okay, I could do 340 divided by 400 and just hit enter and get the decimal form. 0.85 or multiply it by 100 and get 85%. They're all equivalent. Okay, so any of those are perfectly acceptable answers as long as I get that initial idea down. So this really isn't bad as far as it comes to complexity, especially when we're dealing with simple. So as we flip over to the back, we talk about theoretical. Now again, it's still number of successes, what I want to have happen in this event, except this is the total number of possible outcomes. I didn't actually do it. I didn't actually spin the spinner 100 times or flip the coin 50. I'm just saying, based on what I know, this is what should happen. So, for instance, example two. We've got an event that has a door prize. There's 150 people at the event who each have a ticket placed in a hat. The tickets are mixed and then a single ticket is drawn. What's the probability that you win? Well, unless somebody's doing something screwy, like the tickets are different size or they freeze one to make it where you can touch it, I, I don't know then the success in this case okay, would be I win. That's, that's the only outcome that is successful in this case, which is over all the possible people that have tickets. So my chance of winning is I have one ticket, so there's one out of 150 because there's 150 people. And if you divide that into your calculator, you kind of get depressed at how really bad the chances of you winning are, 0 0.006. And even if I turn that into a percent, and I do that by moving my decimal point two places to the right, I'm multiplying by 100, it's still under 1% chance that I'm going to win. So I probably shouldn't start spending the money or making place for the big screen TV because the likelihood of it going home with me is slim and none. Okay, even worse if I'm playing like the lottery. So then for a little more, thank you.
a little more realistic of a look here with things. Um, we spin a spinner with five equal sections. Now, I'm very visual, so this can be the point where you can laugh at something that I do. I'm going to attempt to make a spinner with five equal, in air quotes, sections. This is probably not going to work out well, but I can say that I tried. Yep, those are equal. Not really. So, spinner, five equal sections. Okay, find the probability of getting an odd number. So again, the odd numbers here would be 1, 3, and 5. Those are my successes. And I have three of those. Total number of places on the spinner, 5. So my probability is 3 out of 5. Probability of rolling or spinning, in this case, an even. Well, my even numbers on there are 2 and 4. So I have one, two options out of five. But here's the one that for some reason tends to get people. Okay, probability not a five. Now there's two ways I could do this. I could say, okay, what are the numbers on here that aren't a five? One, two, three. Ooh, not a factor of five, Hardy. Read, Hardy, read. Okay, let's, let's try this again. Factor of five means the number can be divided into. Okay, factor equals number divides into number in question. So in other words, I'm going to look at those numbers and say, hey, does this number divide into 5? If it does, that's a factor. If, I, if it doesn't, it's not. So for instance, I'm like, okay, is 1 a factor of 5? Will 1 divide into 5? Yes. Yes, it will. Does 2 divide evenly into 5? No, it doesn't. Okay, and again, if you're wondering, you just kind of can play. 5 divided by 1, whole number, cool. 5 divided by 2, nope. 5 divided by 3, nope. 5 divided by 4, nope. 5 divided by 5, I hope so, it's the same number. Okay, so not a factor of 4 would be these 3 or 3 out of 5. But the other way you can do it, if you happen to notice underneath each of these, they're already done mathematically. Like, well, why'd they do 1 minus 2 fifths? Well, because what they decided to do is what we're introducing at the bottom of the page. You can find the probability of something not occurring by doing 1 minus the probability that it does. Okay? We found up here that there were two numbers, 1 and 5, that were factors of 5. So I can do 1 minus the probability of it occurring to get that, or I can just count up the things that don't work. They both are going to work for me. But always look, so if you see the word not, it just means the opposite of that happening. And that's described with one more example down here below. Okay, The probability that a couple will have five children will have all girls is 1 out of 32, What's the chance they will have at least one boy? Now, you probably don't want to sit here and write out every possible combination that could happen when you have five kids. There's 32 different combinations that could happen with that. You know, two boys and three girls. Um, two girls and three boys. Da -da 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 -da. So instead of figuring out all the ones that aren't all five, okay, I'm just going to find out the probability that at least one's going to be a boy, because then they're not all girls. Well, the probability of getting all girls, 1 out of 32. 1 minus that gets me the answer. I could do it the other way, but that'd be a lot of work. So what we're going to do, and again, this is kind of our, our baseline we're going to work with, and we're going to get deeper tomorrow, and then we'll get deeper the day after that with a little more complexity until we're feeling pretty good. We're probably looking at a, at a quiz on this later next week when, when we get done with a little sampling of everything. So for today, we're going to take a look just at some simple probability on here, sort of like the ones we looked at on the worksheet. So if a spinner with seven equal sections, and no, I am, I am not drawing again, numbered one through seven is fun, five in each probability. Okay, this is real straightforward. I mean, 
spin Earth 1 through 7, I can just jot down the numbers if I'm more visual. So let's go back to factors again here. Okay, what's the probability of getting a factor of 4? Well, again, I can divide them on my calculator or I can try to do it in my head. Does 1 divide nicely into 4? It does. Does 2 divide nicely into 4? It does. 3 into 4? Not so much. 4 into 4? Absolutely. And if the number is bigger than this, it's not a factor. Because if you do 5 divided by 4, you're going to get a decimal. 6 divided by 4, 7 divided by 4. So those are my only three factors of 4. And there's seven possibilities. And I'm set. That's all I'm doing. Circle it. No other math to do. No other breakdowns. Nothing fancy like that. Yeah. Okay, so like if I was counting by threes, so like three, six, nine, twelve, like that, I just keep counting that way. And we'd look those out. And then number six always seems to get people that kind of scratch their head. They're like, well, wait a minute. Probability of getting eight. Eight's not even one of the numbers. You're right. You have zero probability of getting an 8 on a spinner that's numbered 1 through 7. So, I mean, I guess you could call that a trick question, but not really. Just, just a little bit of common sense here as far as looking at those go. So then we're going to move down to something. When you st We're going to kind of intro you to some things we're going to start getting into a little more tomorrow and into next week. When we get charts that we're working with. So this particular chart has a big charting out of desserts, both of what type of dessert, what flavor of dessert. Whenever you get a table like this, it is in your best interest to add up all of your columns and all of your rows because it's going to make your life easier once you get going. So I'm going to add up all my chocolates, add up all my vanillas, add up all my caramels, and cherry, and apple, lemon, and strawberry, just adding the numbers up in each column, and I'm also going to do it in each row for my cookie, for my cupcake, and for my bar. And what should happen, if I did this correctly, is that all of my columns, if I add those up, and all of my rows, if I add them up, should get the same number. It's kind of my double check to make sure I did this right. Whoops. And boom. All right. So I got a hundred going each way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make note of that here. So then when I go to do my probability. Let's say, for instance, on number 13. Okay, what's the probability of me getting a dessert that has chocolate in it? So, I know there's 100 total desserts. Got that part. How many of them are chocolate? Well, I already added up that column. My chocolate column's 15 out of 100. Now, normally we'll reduce fractions if we can so like here, for instance, if I did math, enter, enter, and in my head I knew they're both divisible by 5, I can simplify it some. Okay, so 3 out of every 20 desserts selected is going to be a chocolate one. Then we start to add a little something to it. Like, for instance, on number 14, probability of getting a fruit cookie. So I need both things. So I look through here, and I go, okay. So here's my cookies, but fruit, I mean, that's really generic, you know, what, what do I do with that? Well, let's see, cherry's a fruit, apple's a fruit, lemon's a fruit, strawberry's a fruit. So I probably have to add all those up. Then do I add up all the cherries? All, do I add all these up? No, because cookie's also in there. So I go into cookie. So I have zero plus three plus ten, that's thirteen. Plus 1 would be 14 out of 100. And what we'll start learning about a little bit more next week is there's even a language in here that might say 
that it's fruit given that it's a cookie, that would change it some more, but we're still in simple right now. So we want to keep it simple. Okay, so look for those little types of things to figure out which rows or columns or which individual values that you're looking for inside of those. So then the last one I want to play with. Another chart. We're going to take a look at 19. Suppose an 8th grade student is selected at random. Okay, well before I get going too far here, let me add up my rows and columns and make sure. And All right, let's see if these add up the way they're supposed to. Nothing worse than doing a whole problem and then having nothing add up right. Three, three, oh, three. Okay. Now we get ready to get back into business here. Suppose an eighth grade student is selected at random. So that's my that's my big group here. The eighth graders. What's the probability that he or she spends more than three hours each day watching TV? Okay, eighth grader over three, would be 40. Okay. And eighth grader, there's 137. So it won't necessarily be the 303 on each one. If they give you a select group, that's the group that you're getting to choose from. So your job is to kind of play with these a bit. Start kind of getting the hang of it. We're going to see some more that are similar tomorrow. We're going to do more with the bars and things like that to get those going. And we'll be going from there. So the key is up front. I had to get one thing fixed up here quick. But then we will be good to go there. There we go. So if you have questions on this or you're looking through your test and you're like, I don't know why I missed this. What do you mean? I'll be happy to help out.